Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Seth, for the, the glowing uh, support. I appreciate it. Um, never started out to be that, to be honest with you, but it just kind of grew into that, and it's a, it's a privilege. I will say right up front, it's been a privilege to be able to be part of that. It, it's, it's as much everybody else as it is me. I just get to be the front guy. Um, so anyway, uh, welcome to KeyCon Asia, and uh, thank you for coming. I'm hoping this is the first year of many. Um, We've, we've really enjoyed our trip so far. So it's, I've been in Shenzhen quite a bit, but it's been a long time since I've been, been here. And um, I have to say it's changed quite a bit. So it's uh, been fun and it's great to get back here. So of course I always do a little bit, uh, my talks are always about what's going on in KiCad because that people seem to want to know that, you know, what's, what's the project doing these days. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about KiCad, some of this stuff. For those of you who've been using version 7 now since it came out at the beginning of the year, a lot of this early information will not be necessarily new, um, but then we'll get into what's coming up in version 8, which is going to be released at the beginning of next year. Uh, January 31st is always our target date. So far, we've been pretty good at getting, getting within a few days of that, so hopefully we'll um, get there. So before I get too far here, I always like to uh, talk about um, happenings in KiCad. So stable version was released on February 2nd, so we did miss it by a couple days this year. Um, stable, uh, version 8 will be released on January 31st of next year. Um, so far that's going on track. We've been in feature freeze now for a month, so we're bug fixing and getting ready for that. Um, at, the end of la at the end of last year, we had our um, donation campaign. We raised over $200,000 last year, which for uh, a project, a smaller project like KeyCAD, that's really substantial. So thank you to everybody who donated. Um, we added three new members to the lead development team, which is good because that means KeyCAD's resource pool is growing. And as the project gets bigger and bigger, uh, the more developers we have, the more we can continue to support the community at large. Um, Specific to uh, this conference, which is interesting, so, and we have Hubert to thank for this, uh, Wachu, next PCB, um, is in the process of putting together a team to contribute to KeyCAD full-time, and they now have one full-time person working on um, KeyCAD. He's here today. His name's Eric. If you uh, happen to see him and thank him for his contributions, um, he's getting up to speed. Yeah, he's, there he is. Um, so we're really happy and excited about that and see how that provides you know, more development support with KeyCAD going forward. Um, one of the problems, one of the sticking points we had for a few years was we didn't really have a head librarian. So we now have a, somebody's uh, stepped up to take that position and we, we um, fast-tracked a bunch of new uh, library uh, developers. So that means people who submit symbols and footprints and 3D models, those are getting integrated faster used to take quite a long time to get them, you know, approved and into KeyCAD proper. That is now being done pretty quickly. Um, something else that's interesting that I didn't expect to see happen was, uh, for those of you who don't know who Worth Electronic is, they're uh, a German company that provides all kinds of different electronic components. Um, they're in the process now of adding their entire product line to the symbol footprint and 3D model libraries. And that's significant for a commercial company because TCAT has strict rules about the licensing and how we uh, release our symbols and footprints and 3D models. They have to be uh, under a license that allows people to share them and contribute and modify them. And they've stepped up in a big way and that's really interesting because I'm hoping that's will be like kind of a watershed type event where other commercial companies will go, hey, we want to be part of that too, and they'll contribute their, their product lines too. So expect to see over the next year or so the worth, the libraries for worth electronic um, components grow quickly in KeyCAD. This next one is the reason we're here right now. Um, historically, in the KeyCAD in the United States and in Europe have typically been our biggest user base. Um, but in the last year and a half, Asia and specifically China, 
the, the user base has grown rapidly, very, very rapidly, much, further, much quicker than we expected. And so because of that, we, uh, we thought it made sense to, uh, Hubert suggested after KeyCon uh, Europe this year that we have a KeyCon Asia, and uh, we thought that was a great idea. And even though, I mean, kudos to Hubert for putting this together in really a fairly short amount of time. Um, we're here, this is why we're here, to, to meet with uh, our user base here in Asia and get a chance to make new re relationships and meet new people. And so it's important while we're here to take advantage of Seth and I and, and, and ask questions and, and get to know us and we get to know you. So it, makes, it makes the project better for everybody. It's uh, really important. And of course, you know, we always like to give our uh, platinum sponsors uh, the appreciation that they deserve. So to give you an idea how fast KeyCAD has grown in the last few years, two years ago we had zero platinum sponsors and the platinum sponsor for KeyCAD is $15,000 uh, annual donation. We now have four. So we've grown quite rapidly in the last two years. And, and these are in alphabetical order. They're uh, Eisler, um, DigiKey, Oh, what happened? Oh, we went too, it went too far. Hey, we're, I'm missing a slide. Uh-oh, Hubert, what did you miss? <laughs> uh, well, okay, so it's, it's also uh, Wachu and uh, KeyCAD Services Corporation. So I don't know what happened to it. We're missing a slide there somehow or another. Um, so thanks to the, uh, all our sponsors, but our platinum sponsors, it really, really helps. It allows us to pay developers who are typically do work voluntarily to help contribute to KeyCAD, key so that's important. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about version seven. I'm gonna to try to get through these as quickly as possible. Um, so some of the features that hap happened in version seven, uh, this was a big one, especially for uh, language support. You can now use any font in KeyCAD for in anything, symbols, schematics, uh, 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 boards, footprints, uh, that happened this in version seven. For those of you who um, have the uh, 3D space mouse, I don't know if you're from the 3D connection space mouse, uh, if you like those, KeyCAD now supports those directly on um, Windows and Mac OS, I think only. I think the Linux driver hasn't been supported yet. We also added uh, data collection. So one of the things that we had, um, and by data collection, I mean bug reports. So one of the problems in the past is getting high quality bug reports. We now allow you to opt in to Sentry. And if you, for some reason you have a crash in KeyCAD, it will pull together all the information about the crash and upload it to our uh, Sentry servers. So we can you know, fix bugs a little bit more easily instead of asking users to do a, 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 a stack trace or whatnot. Um, it's, it's easier for uh, use, to use Sentry. Currently, this is only set up to work on Windows and Mac OS. Uh, Linux users have to still do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, in ver version six, we uh, added the plugin manager. The, in version seven, it now checks for updates automatically and it will let you know down at the bot, if you look up there, it'll let you know whether there, you, you have new packages available so we implemented drag and drop support. You, so now you can like change the project or you can drag this, a schematic into the schematic editor and it'll just uh, append it to the end of an existing schematic. So there's now drag and drop support. For those of you who have the fancy new Apple M1 or M series processors, you can, as you can see, the, uh, we now do a, uh, uh, a package for, or a package for a Mac OS that includes both the ARM binaries and the x86 binaries. This one was one that's been asked for for a long time. So starting in version seven, you can now run, generate most of the outputs on the command line. So if you have, you want to automate uh, the output generation for your products, rather than having to do it manually and click and do your plots, this is all, this is all scriptable through the command line interface. Uh, command line interface. Uh, the other thing we did was we integrated all the preferences so you, you can change all your preferences for all, the, all of KeyCAD in one place. In the past, they were all separate. There was one for the board editor, one for the schematic editor. 
that are now all available in one place. So let's talk a little bit about the schematic features. We have new shape tools. In the past, you had to draw circles by drawing two arcs and squares by drawing uh, polygons. It's, there's actually shape tools now to generate those directly. We have text boxes. In the past, you know, we just had straight text. You now can do boxes. You can um, do all kinds of formatting to them. They'll automatically uh, word wrap. So one of the big requests was orthogonal wire draw, dr dragging in the schematic editor. In the past, if you started to drag, it would just, your, your uh, wires would become angles and didn't look right. So there's now orthogonal wire dragging. Works really well. We added a new ERC warning. One of the issues in, in uh, EE scheme or the schematic editor was if you're off of a 25 mil grid or 50 mil grid, you won't make con you might not make a connection to the pin. So it'll now tell you if there's a connection that's off grid. So you get an ERC check just to make sure you have you have full connectivity. We now support uh, 45 degree wire draw drawing. In, in the schematic editor, so instead of only right angles, you can do 45 or free form if you'd like. There's do not populate, so if you, when you want to generate bombs, if you have a symbol that you don't want it to show up in the, uh, or I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry, that's a do, in the board editor, uh, there's a do not populate option for your symbols. We now support ODBC libraries. Uh, one of the requests that a lot of companies had asked us to implement was um, uh, being able to uh, generate um, symbol libraries using a database. So if your favorite database happens to have an ODBC connector, you can now do that. It's a little bit of a manual operation, but it's uh, fully functional. Um, you can, in the uh, symbol chooser, you can define, in the past, you can only have the symbol chooser, you can only see the uh, name and the uh, description of the uh, symbol. Now you can add all of the different fields of the symbol and see inside the chooser for, if you're looking for um, more specific information. Hyperlinks, so you can now add hyperlinks into your schematics, and then when you click on them, they'll go to... Uh, wherever they define, so HTTP, HTTPS, file, or page number are the currently supported link types. We embed a, we embed a lot more information now in PDF files, so if you uh, plot to PDF, uh, they will um, include things like uh, symbol information, uh, links, bookmarks, so that your PDFs are a little nicer. Uh, Real-time connectivity. So in the past, in KiCad 6, connectivity was done on demand. So every time you made a change, it would run the connectivity, and then so it was incremental. Now it happens in the background while you're working. Um, on smaller designs, it doesn't make much of a difference, but on really, really big designs, this makes a, a significant amount of difference in the, uh, the responsiveness of the schematic editor. Uh, another ERC improvement we made was um, in the past you could have uh, multi-unit symbols. If you forgot a unit, it wouldn't, sh it wouldn't tell you in the ERC. It does that now. We've added a few additional line styles. So in the past we've only, we only had uh, straight lines and solid lines and dashed. Now there's dots, dot, dash. So quite a few of those if those are something that you use. Another feature request that people would ask us for was to be able to annotate a selection of symbols. Rather than having to annotate a sheet or the whole schematic, you can now just select the symbols that you want and it'll annotate just those symbols. Uh, we, if you're uh, doing any simulation that you have IBIS models, uh, KiCad now supports IBIS models as well. So. Um, for those, those of you who are doing advanced simulations, that's kind of handy. There's uh, the simulator now, you can actually, there's a pretty complex editor that allows you to edit your simulation model. So if you look here in this example, there's, uh, uh, 
you could change the parameters of like a transistor or a, a FET or whatever, whatever the, the parameters of the splice parameters for that model would be, uh, allows you to do that. We now support stacking pins in the symbol editor. So in the past, if you had like a big uh, FPGA and it had 20 ground pins, you know, you had to have 20 ground pins and you had to tie them all together. Now you can just stack them into a single pin, connect it once, and all 20 pins get connected. So you, that'll, that's, uh, you'll notice a lot of our symbols have been updated to support this uh, paradigm. But you can do that instead of, of course, you can still draw all 20 if that's your preference. But in the past, we, uh, the ERC would complain about that because you had more than one pin in, one, in the same place. Um, let's see, where are we here? Uh, the, the pin table editor, you can add, add and remove rows. You can see whatever you want. Um, this is a nice handy feature if you have a, doing a lot of uh, edits to a bunch of pins on a symbol. So now onto the board editor. Um, there were a bunch of DRC improvements. So we've added that separate tabs to, to um, so everything isn't in the same, all the DRC issues aren't in the same tab. There's now a tool to check to see if your, one of the DRC checks is to see if the, uh, your footprint has changed from the library. So let's say you made a change to a library that you have across multiple uh, footprints. It'll check and tell you that there's a change. And then you can just click on it and, and update it from the library. It'll automatically get updated. Um, we have an... Here's the ignore, here's an example of the ignore test on the DRC tab or in the DRC dialog. We also added a few new um, custom rules. So, so in, in version six, we added custom rules and these are really powerful for those of you who know what they are. Um, they're real important, but we've added a few additions in, in seven. So you can do things like mechanical um, custom rule clearances you can now set the severity before they were always, if you violated a, a custom rule, it was just an error. Now you can set the severity to a warning or something less, of, less severe if that's your, you prefer. And there's now pad to zone rule. So for things like uh, thermal, uh, thermal fills in zones, you, you, you can uh, do uh, rules-based uh, uh, for that. We added radial dimensions. Um, previously, all we supported was uh, linear dimensions. So there's, in the board editor, there's now an inverse text object. So instead, in the past, all the text was positive. But you can now do an inverse. So in, in this case, the white would be copper and the, the black text would actually be the lack of copper, would get etched. Um, one of the features that w has been commonly requested is automatic zone filling. Um, just a caveat on this, if you have a really complex board and you turn this on, it's gonna be laggy. So for simple, you know, fairly non-complex geometries, uh, turning on the zone filling, you won't notice it. But if you have an eight layer board with a zone on every layer with lots of cutouts and knockouts, you probably wanna leave that turned off. Background bitmaps. This was a nice feature for um, uh, designing, like if you're trying to copy a legacy board, you can put a, a, a bitmap with transparency in the background, and then you can route over, you can see the keycad is being routed behind the, you can see the bitmap behind, so you can make sure your routing is the same as your original board. So if you have an old legacy board that you don't know, don't have the design files for. We've added a uh, selective rip up. So you can, before you had to like just select everything and, and rip, rip up what you wanted, but now you can just select the nets, like a bunch of nets and then just rip them all up at once. We have um, what we call automatic uh, trace routing. So you click an object and then you can finish the route automatically. Um, it's pretty simple. And then there's a more complex variant of this that's called attempt to route and it'll you, where you can select a whole object and it'll route. Now it's not a substitute for an auto router 
but it helps you do simple sections really fast. Like in this case, a simple straight through, pass through connector. Um, this also works from the schematic editor. So if you select a block in the schematic, you can try to route, it'll attempt to route the whole block in the schematic. We also, in seven, we added a search panel. So instead of having a dialog box, you can open up a panel in the bottom of the editor, do a search, you know, search, and then when you double click on any of the found objects, it will center it in the um, board editor and take you right to that object. Properties panel. In, this was only in the board editor in seven. Um, you can select an object and you can edit its properties over here on the left without having to do the, not having to run the edit dialog. So if you, if this is your preferred method, you just go over here and change the properties for whatever selected. If you have multiple objects selected, then only the common properties will set, show up. So if you have a, a track and a via, you know, you might get, you only get the common properties. So, uh, but it's nice when you want to do bulk editing, you can select a bunch of vias. If you want to change the whole size or the, uh, the annular ring of a via, you can select a bunch of them and just change them all at once. We, we, we improved the footprint spread. One of the, pro one of the things that KiCad didn't do very well was when you imported your schematic into your board and you had a, a, a new board and all your footprints were, they just kind of were randomly scattered. It now kind of groups them. You see here, kind of grouping them in, in um, sections. Um, there's also a nice pack and move tool so you can select. You see here they're selecting the footprints in or the symbols in the schematic editor. It highlights them and then you can pull apart you can pull out that section of footprints and then lay it, lay it out however you want. We made a bunch of step export, uh, exporter improvements in V7. Um, so things like in the past, thing, things like arcs and circles were exported as uh, segments and line segments like they are in the board editor. They're now actually exported as arcs and circles instead of a bunch of line segments. You can now plot you can add extra layers to plot on top of each layer. So if you look at the dialogue there, the, the selections in highlighted in red, you can add those to every one of the layers that you are going to plot on the left side. This is handy. This is useful for people who do documentation for your, um, to add those to each of the copper layers. There's now a clearance resolution tool. This is uh, something that was requested quite a bit was, wasn't always easy to figure out where your clearances were coming from. So here you can see in this example, there was two objects, we selected them and it, we can see, we can see where the final clearance was generated, you know, which, which rule was being used to say, yep, that's what the clearance is. And then you can, you can look through the different properties and figure out where that is rather than trying to go back into the, like into the, uh, all the different places where you can define uh, clearance rules, it's, it'll tell you where, how it came up with that clearance rule. The other thing we added in seven is there's now this nice uh, stack up manager. So uh, you can do things like your dielectric colors, your solder mask colors, your, your silk screen colors, uh, things like uh, your thicknesses and your, all your, uh, tangents for uh, your board design. And if you're using um, the Gerber X extensions, it will embed that information. And if your board manufacturer accepts the Gerber X extensions, that, that, that's kind of handy so you don't have to uh, give them a, a drawing to tell, tell them how everything stacks up. And a few other things that happened in seven, the the, ca the calculators, we added a, a, a wavelength panel to the calculator. There's also a fusing current and a cable size calculator. Um, we, made, we added viewports to the um, 3D viewer. So if you want to create uh, viewports that you can save and then recall for uh, purposes of, you know, if you want to display them. So that was pretty much it for seven. So version eight. So this is these are these things are definitely all going to be in version eight. Um, there, that's what's coming uh, down the road here. 
So one of the things is we, some of the things that we did with the, um, uh, the step export we did to the SVG export as well. So there's been a lot of improvements in the SVG exporters. We now have a startup splash screen. Um, if you can turn, if you're, if that's something that <laughs> some people like this, the splash screen, uh, we, we were asking, uh, we, the reason we put this in there was for um, vendors who want to um, add their own uh, custom customization to KeyCAD for different looks and feels. They can change that to whatever they want. We now support alternate hotkeys. So if you want to define a hotkey that's in, in, in addition to the original hotkey, you can define a second one. And here you see I changed the move key to from M to control alt shift m you do that if you want if you have a 64-bit windows install um, we now support arm natively so you can go to the keycad download page you can grab the arm 64 variant for windows and it'll be native it won't have to run under uh, x86 emulation if, you're, if you have any projects around that are easy EDA, this was just uh, contributed recently. There's now a project importer, so it will import the entire easy EDA project into KeyCAD. You can now run the ERC and DRC from the command line. So if you want to automate, let's say you have a, uh, you want to automate your uh, design checks, right? You, you submit a new change to a board or a schematic. You can run the test, and then you can look and see if there's any errors that you want to worry about in the uh, format. The, it's a plain text file, which is a J, uh, JSON format, and that's what it looks like. So you can see there you ran the, the, the DRC against the uh, board file, and there's the, the, the violations that it found. Object properties, so they've been added to now to both the schematic and the symbol, symbol library editor. So you, you click on the object, you can change its properties over in the left, just like you could in the board editor in 7. This was a nice feature that was uh, uh, sponsored by one of our uh, KeyCAD services customers. They have these really, really complex bus designs. And so navigating around buses when you have deeply nested uh, hierarchies was a problematic. So now you can go highlight in a net, and you'll see there it highlights in pink, and then it shows you all the objects connected to that net, and you can just click on them and navigate right, rather than sitting there and have to go down and back up the hierarchy through the sheets and look for the highlighted pink. That's available. <clears throat> We added the search panel to the schematic editor like we did the uh, board editor. So down at the bottom, you have the same thing. You can type in a search, double click on the ob, and it'll take you to the object. This has been a long requested feature. You can now generate bill of materials directly from KeyCAD. You no longer have to run the bomb tool, which was really nothing more than Python scripts. Um, you can generate it directly so you can do things like the output format, separators, you can use tabs or spaces, whichever you want to use. Um, and that's actually part of, if you look, you see the edit tab, that's actually the um, library table editor. So if you go into the other tab, that's all the library, uh, the symbol fields, the big table that allows you to edit them. On this tab, it allows you to go directly to the, to generate bombs. <clears throat> um, there's new, uh, this is a handy feature. If you use this, it kind of fixes the problem of, in the past, of getting things off-grid in the schematic editor. So when you're drawing connect, connectable objects, it'll use a 50 mil grid. But if you're, let's say you only want to use a 10 mil grid to, do, to position text, because you don't, you know, 50 mil is too coarse, it'll automatically, so when you're placing a text object, it'll automatically pick that grid instead of a 50 mil grid. So you don't have to constantly go back and forth and change your grids depending on what you're um, placing in the schematic editor. We now support nested inheritance. In version 6, we in introduced the concept of inheritance, but it was only one level. You could only uh, inherit from a root schematic. Now you can inherit as deep as you'd like. So in this case, 
you look here, this symbol, you can't see it underneath the, uh, this symbol is actually derived from a derived symbol, which you couldn't do in the past. So it makes things like, um, you, can, you can do things like um, one, one field difference for each level down makes making really complex. If you're, if you're the kind of person that does atomic libraries, you know, you want it all the way down to the part number level, this is, per, this is handy. Um, there's now a tool to check um, symbol differences from the library. So instead of just giving you a warning now in the ERC, there's now a tool that you can actually look and see the difference. And then you see here as I'm sliding this back and forth between the, um, the library and the schematic, you can see where, what, how it's different from what's in the library. You can decide whether you want to make it change, updated or not. Um, we now support uh, exporting Cadence Allegro PCB designer netlists. So if you want to use KiCad to generate the schematics, do your board lay, layouts in leg, uh, Cadence, you can do that. Um, you can now import uh, SVGs and DXFs into the schematic editor, which you couldn't do prior to version 8. You can now in, import... Um, uh, CAD star, Altium, and Eagle symbol libraries directly. So if you're, you've got a lot of legacy libraries in one of those three tools, you don't have to, you don't lose them. You can, um, you just import them into KiCad like you would add a KiCad library and it just imports them. You can just use them the way they are. Now you can't modify them. You have to convert them and we'll talk about that a little bit later. There's a tool to do that. Um, there's now a, a thumbnail preview on the, the screen capture misses some of them, but at now on this, the symbol editor, on the library tree preview, you can see here, it'll show you a thumbnail, so you don't have to double click it to see it in the, the drawing area. You can get the thumbnail as you hover over top of it. There's now a, a symbol library file change watcher. So if you notice here, I'm changing the the symbol library in a text editor, please don't do this. I'm just doing this for show and tell. And you noticed it changed, the value changed. Um, the reason we do this is because you, you can open two instances of KiCad and accidentally overwrite. So if you're working on a library in a different instance of KiCad at the same time, you can inadvertently overwrite. So it now checks and it'll refresh your library on the fly. So as I was telling you earlier, there, here's the, so let's say you have a bunch of third-party um, uh, libraries, Altium, Eagle, and you add them to your library table. By just clicking this one um, button, it'll export those all and convert them into KiCad libraries. And then you'll be able to modify them like you would no, any normal KiCad library. The... Uh, the simulator got a lot of changes this go around. Here's the, we got now have differential cursors so you can, you know, use your cursors to measure voltage changes or frequency differentials. We can import LT splice. So if you're an LT splice user, um, you can import LT splice schematics directly. Here I'm importing an LT splice and it'll bring it in just like an LT splice. Um, there's a simple oscillator circuit. Uh, it'll import that. Uh, one caveat with that, you do have to have LT splice installed because it has to find the LT splice elements like the resistors, capacitors from, from LT splice to, to create that schematic. So you will have to have LT splice installed to do that. But it works, this works really well. So if you have a lot of LT splice sim simulations around, you can use, you can now do, you can now simulate them in, uh, in uh, KiCad. We added FFT support. Here's a, an example of a really bad oscillator. It's got a lot of, uh, so that should look like a nice point right there. It should look like that one point without all that. Uh, so I just threw that up there for fun. Um, so you, now you can do FFT. You can also do S parameters, Fourier analysis. So we've added, we really started to add a lot of capabilities to the SPICE simulator. A long requested feature <laughs> is you can now edit uh, power symbols. So if you want to, you have a custom voltage and you don't want to go create a brand new symbol with just that voltage, you can now just change the voltage and 
PCAT handles that internally by automatically. So that's it for the schematic edit, the schematic editor. Um, the board editor in version eight. So the same tool that the, the library diff tool, there's also a library diff tool for footprints. So you can see here, same thing. You can see the differences in the footprint as I move between the library and the board. So you can look at changes graphically rather than just getting an ERC saying, hey, it changed in the library, but you don't know what's different. You can actually see what's different now. We now support importing um, Altium uh, footprints directly. Uh, you just add it to your library table and you can use your, your uh, Altium footprints just like you would any other footprint library. We support importing SolidWorks uh, PCB files. Uh, that's new. There's a do not populate. It's hard to see underneath. The, there's now a do not populate flag for footprints. So if you want to exclude things from your uh, board position file, you can uh, set that and that will prevent it from being uh, exported in your position files. <clears throat> you can now add connectivity to arbitrary copper shapes. So if you want to draw uh, any type of arbitrary copy sh copper shapes, so assign it a net, in this case VN, and then you can connect to it with uh, with the router, you know, route to it just like you would any other. Um, this would be connected to the VN net just like it would any other piece of, any other like net uh, trace or via. Now I didn't show the automated version of this yet, but we now, you can now change, um, you can do the interactive meander tuning. You can go select the meanders, like say you have uh, match pairs or, or specified length uh, traces can now actually select the meanders and change them real time in the board editor. We, we had a bunch more step improvements again in V8 because as time goes on, we learn, we, we get more and more weird step, uh, step uh, models and we, and we make them work in KiCad, which is always tricky because everybody's interpretation of the step file format is different. Well, we now have a properties tool in the, the footprint editor as well. So now all the editors have property panels. So you don't have to open the, di you don't have to use the properties dialogues to edit them. The same uh, uh, thumbnail preview for, that we implemented in, for symbol libraries also got implemented for footprint libraries. So you can just hover over the, when you're edit, in the footprint library editor, you just hover over the, uh, the, the footprint name and it'll just show you a little thumbnail of the footprint. And, in, and last but not least, uh, if you look, we added a, but we made a quite a big, quite a few changes to the uh, 3D viewer. You can now turn, turn items on and off with this panel over here on the right. And then you can save those views down here. You can give them names so you can go back to a specific view. Um, and then you can also access the, um, the uh, your uh, the other uh, the views down here as well. So you can save all that, and then next time you open it up, they'll still be there, and you can have some consistency in your three D viewing experience. So that's it for eight. Um, so. We'll talk about nine next year at FOSDOM, so if you get a chance to watch that video, we'll get a chance to talk about what's coming up in version nine. Um, so thank you for um, coming here today again, and thank you for uh, watching this uh, presentation. And while Seth, what Seth said is somewhat true, I, I, I do get to be the front guy of KeyCAD. I don't think, I never think of myself as KeyCAD. There, the, the KeyCAD project is all the people that make up the team, all the users. It's a community. I've always approached it that way, and I think it's the right way to approach it. And so I, I always like to give out thanks because it's, this isn't about me. It's about KeyCAD. Um, so I want to say a special thanks to um, Hubert and Watu. Um, very, um, they sponsored this. They did a great job. I, I think everybody, I mean, I'm really impressed with the job they did. So thank you very much to Watu. Um, as always, 
can never say thanks to a development team enough. Um, a lot of the, a lot of people are you know volunteer their time and talent, and um, I can't say thanks enough to that group of individuals who makes the KeyCAD product possible. Um, thanks to all our sponsors. Um, it's you know if you like KeyCAD, consider you know if you, ha you have uh, any kind of interest in donating to the project. We really appreciate the donations. Goes a long way to help KeyCAD continue to grow. Um, special thanks again. Thank you, Hubert, for organizing all this in such a short period of time and doing a great job. Um, Hawk, where's Hawk? I saw him earlier. Oh, there he is. Uh, great job on the, if you haven't checked out the uh, badge yet, check out the badge. Uh, nice job on the badge. And Paul, where's Paul? He's here somewhere. Um, Paul's going to put on a workshop. He's going to organize that. Thank you to Paul from coming from down, down under, right? The land down under, thank him for coming here to uh, put on the workshop. Um, and I hope to see, I hope we have a key con Asia next year, and I hope to see you all again here next year. Uh, thanks a lot. Hello, hello, hello. Do you have any questions? So we will have a dedicated Q&A session, you know, later this afternoon. Uh, we just take several questions now, okay, because of the time limit. Anyone? Hi. I'm curious if you have any opinion about the recent web port that was achieved, at least a, a web visualizer that was uh, recently made for web KiCad online. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, do I have an opinion? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, do you think that it could be eventually integrated officially? Could it the, evolve well, more on the web? Yeah, we're, I mean, so one of the beauties of open source is, and, and kind of, it's one of its Achilles tendons too, is, is that it's, we can share and they're free to modify. So as long as they make their modifications publicly available, you know, that's great. We, we would hope that he would seriously contribute. I see, she, I'm sorry, as she would contribute uh, has she reached out to us about integrating any of that? Okay, uh, but no, I think it's it's great. I mean, I, that's what that's what the community is based. I mean, that's the idea of open source. I mean, that literally is the beauty of open source. You know, you you, you could if you've got like a specific thing that you're trying to achieve, and maybe you don't want to get involved in contributing to KeyCAD proper, which, you know, it's, it's a pretty high bar. I mean, you know, because there's a lot of, you know, you got to get, in, you know, you got to become a developer and you got to go through the steps that you need to get on the development team and you, you have to work, you know, closely with the team. Um, yeah, it's a great thing. It's a great way to scratch your own itch, for lack of a better term. It's really what open source is all about. And, yeah, no, I think it's great. 